and welcome to the Common Geeking Program. We are a book club style podcast where each episode we discuss a different topic from our own geeky and nerdy perspectives. Uh, I am your host as usual, Jeff Levitt, and uh, this week, we uh, a, a few months ago, we, we did an episode where we had... Uh, uh, Colin explained the plot, uh, the very convoluted plot of Tenet to us, and uh, that was a lot of fun. So we were like, "Hey, let's let's find something else that's really convoluted and have someone explain it to us." And uh, this this month, the form that that is taking is a uh, Chowder is going to be explaining the plot of Final Fantasy VII, which is not by any means a niche piece of media. But Jocelyn and I are dirty casuals when it comes to video games, so uh, yeah. <laughs> all I know about Final Fantasy VII is. Cloud and Sephiroth? Sephiroth? Question mark. He's yeah. also in this one, right? Is, is okay, he in cool. This one? I also know uh, that there's six before this, and we're not probably not going to talk much about those, are we? Yeah, we're not going to. Well, yeah, they're unrelated, right? That's yeah. That's they're, all, all, they're, all the Final yeah. Fantasy games, like all the mainline Final Fantasy games, aren't related to each other. Uh, Which is why you have man. bullshit like fucking ten two and stuff like that, right? Unless you got ten two or. Yeah. 13 2 or some bullshit like that but otherwise yeah but yeah i mean i i fucking already introduced them sort of but uh, yeah i'm joined by chatter and jocelyn do you guys want to say anything on your own behalf <laughs> i i would like to say what i'm gonna be talking about is final fantasy 7 remake and that is actually going to be an important distinction between oh yeah uh, i i i know a between, little bit about that okay between remake and uh original fascinating are you going to yeah. break down those differences for us uh yes I am uh and he and like uh the thing I uh struggled with initially was like going should I just explain Final Fantasy VII original and then explain remake or but that would take too long so the plan is for me to run through like uh some of the history and then talk about Final Fantasy VII remake and then like uh interject with like ch- important changes and significant additions and stuff uh as I run through Final Fantasy. 7 remake and i hope that works for like giving you the understanding context that's important okay yeah Perfect. that works i'm here for it i'm so excited um, to go in knowing very little <laughs> yeah right i was like i was like oh i know some stuff about final fantasy 7 and then i thought about it and i was like no i guess really all i know is that the cloud is in it and sephiroth i think is in it and that's pretty much the <laughs> i know cloud has a girlfriend oh i mean cloud him. Cloud has an option of like uh two love interests it's a, it's and an then like option? You don't uh, have to date uh Aerith? Yeah, Jocelyn, that you that's don't have to date Aerith. You could choose Tifa <gasps> in the or, in oh, the original Tifa too. Yeah, and in the original game there was like if you made certain choices, you could end up going on a date with Barrett, which was played for comedy, but like Wolf. Uh, my, Barrett's a, a guy, I'm assuming, yes. by, by context. Barrett's a guy. But but like the thing is, I've been ship I've been shipping a poly relationship between Cloud, Aerith, Tifa, and Barrett my <laughs> whole life, so that's good. All right, all right. We're getting so into excited. the weeds here a little bit. <laughs> so, Let's gonna uh, we're great. gonna start off we're gonna start off by Chowder kind of summarizing and discussing and bringing us through and we'll uh we'll interject with our uh with our thoughts and questions as we go along and then we'll end off with our rating section where i guess in 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 this format it, it's mostly going to be uh rating how much more interested jocelyn and i are into playing this game based on chowder's description which is a little bit different than we usually do it but it, it'll be a good time you guys want to move on into the summary let's go sure All right, Shouter, you wanna you wanna break us down <clears throat> Final Fantasy VII Remake Edition, and uh, yeah, I'll let you fucking start wherever you want. I don't I don't know anything about this nonsense. Go yeah, ahead. so the original ca- game came out for the PlayStation, and it was a big game changer. The graphics were like mind blowing for their time, and the story I I believe is timeless. It's a it's a very good story that uh. This is the one where he's got fucking like polygon hands, right? Like that, that, yeah, yeah the... exactly. Okay. Yeah, I know that I was about to get to that. The, the thing okay. is, the, gra- the graphics, the graphics haven't exactly aged well. Uh, you know, a oh, lot of the game oh. mechanics hasn't quite aged well. The story, I believe, has aged incredibly well. But so, like, you know, like uh, a- after like Final Fantasy VII became huge, people were clamoring 
we want a remake. We want a game that, like, updates all the visuals so that, like, more people can get into it without, like, or so that, like, we can play it again uh, the way we kind of imagined it in our mind, right? And uh, Mm -hmm. important note about the original release, because, like, the game was so big and technology was uh, less what it is now, the game, when you bought it, bought, came on multiple discs. Uh, oh, this yeah. will be significant. <laughs> That's wild. Is that precedented at all at that time or since? Oh, yeah. That, no. Uh, yeah, that, that, was that a is big a pr- thing. For yeah, big, like big games. So, gotcha. Yeah. And like. Yeah, okay. I guess that sounds right. Kind of like how Titanic used to be on two VHSs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, of course. I don't think I ever had Titanic on VHS. So. It was weird, man. <laughs> but I, de- I definitely remember that with some movies. Yeah. yeah. It was like if they were after a certain length of time, they, and yeah. Or like, a, a, what, you know, half of it was like a B-side on the fucking disc. Yeah. All right, so. Technology, and and like, man. <laughs> and over the years, like, whenever Square Enix would, like, uh, show off a new engine or, like, show do like a tech demo for a game console they'd always use like the opening scene from uh final fantasy 7 to like kind of show this is what this can do and it's like a cock tease for people like (laughs) (laughs) every so they're just like this is what the graphics would look like if we were doing this game on this system but we're not (laughs) but we're not exactly and like around the ps3 people were like demanding that shit because like uh the the original game was showing his age uh cut to like Many years later, and a few of uh, the failures of Final Fantasy 13 and 15, which had long, troubled developments, uh, they they announced Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and everyone's like excited, and they're like, Part One. The what we're gonna do is Part One is gonna cover everything that happens on Disc One, and and everyone's like, uh, okay, sure, like. Because, like, you know... So it's basically, like, half a game, right? I... Like, um, that's what it sounded like? Like uh, a third of a game, actually. At the time? Actually, a third yeah. of a game. Oh, gotcha. Game. Woof. Yeah. But, like, everyone's still excited, because, like, it's this something. is something... It's something everyone has wanted. Okay, God could have come down and said, do not buy this game, and it would still make money. <laughs> I don't like Cyberpunk. Did, had there... Had, had there fucking been any uh, other Final Fantasy remakes prior to this? No. Or was that the first one? Gotcha. No. So it's not like Pokemon where like every few years they're like, here's your fucking third version of, of Gen 1. Yeah. Next year is your third version of Gen 2. Yeah, no. <laughs> and here's here's the thing. Like part of the reason they couldn't like remake Final Fantasy 7 was that like uh, Square lost the fucking source code for the game, and it's like, Whoa. Yeah. whoopsie like, daisy. One, one, <laughs> one of the most influential, important games they lose the goddamn source code for. So, like, if they lost, like, legally lost, no, no, or lost, lost like, like lost, whoops, can't find like, it, lost, can't find <laughs> it, lost. It's gone forever. And it's a TV uh, show I love now. That. And 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 it's like so Square. So, like, if they want to remake it, it would be costly because they basically have to make mm-hmm. it from scratch. Uh, right. And it's not... Because the cheap parts of it were, like, the fucking writing and the character designs and shit like that. Like, <laughs> the stuff that they wouldn't... That they would have already had some basis for yeah. were not the most expensive parts of it, I imagine. Yeah, so, you know, this new game's gonna have, like, incredible graphics and, like, like dialogue that's rewritten so that it's not as stilted as it was because early days of video games and uh, a new combat system that wasn't the turn-based that was Final Fantasy 7 but more action-based and so a lot of hype for this game and that brings us to the actual game itself I have n- <laughs> I have many a notes Chatter's got notes <laughs> <laughs> at least one of us does uh, well, we're not supposed to have notes. We're going in blind, baby. How could I have notes? I feel like I should be taking notes because I feel like it's going to get like very confusing otherwise, but I'm not going to take notes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got the we open up and it's the opening cutscene, and it is like shot for shot and it's a beautiful HD and oh, it's great. I, I'm loving it. You know, so a, I sense a butt coming. No, no butt right now. 
No butt right now. A train comes. Damn, I like butts. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot lie. God but like, a, a train com- comes to a station and like out pops out uh, the members of an eco a uh, rebel group called uh, Avalanche. We see Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse. They were characters who had a very small part in the original game, but get to be expanded upon uh, in this. So, good stuff. And like, Bar- okay. and Barrett comes out and he calls down Cloud, and he does like the big fancy pose that he did in the original game. Except it's not. Now, who, who the fuck is Barrett? Barrett would be uh, the leader that's... of Avalanche and like one of the main. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. And Cloud's cool, cool. boyfriend. <laughs> and uh, you know they show off the new combat system and and they're like doing a bombing mission, right? Like Cloud is a mercenary hired by Barrett to help them out because Cloud used to work for this corporation called Shinra, which basically rules everything because like they're big and powerful and they have access to these. Are these sources of powers called Mako, which is like the planet's life force that they use to basically power everything. Ener- uh, electricity, uh, cars, uh, just about everything. And so they have their own power military force. It's very cyberpunk like that. And uh, Interesting. But it all comes at the cost of like the fact that they're draining the pa- planet's life force. And that ain't healthy. So Yeah, it sounds not ideal. <laughs> I wonder what that's a metaphor for. Um <laughs> And, like, so they, they go off on this mission and, you know, fight through some dudes, go through the first boss fight, and, like, they plant the bomb, and they escape before the timer goes off, and the bo- the blast ends up being much bigger than uh, they had anticipated, and causes a lot of uh, collateral damage. As they're making way- their way through the crowds that have appeared, Cloud has an hallucination of Sephiroth, and here is an important distinction that needs to be made. Sephiroth in the original game was a twist. Like he does not, uh, he is only mentioned in a couple of sentences in the first disc. Uh, you only realize he's a thing until the end, and you don't even meet him until much later after the first disc. Mm-hmm. So, and what's what's his whole thing, or is that that coming later to be revealed? Uh, like I know he's got a big sword, but what what is he fucking? What's he about? In this fucking climate change. Yeah, like, what is he about? Uh, what is he Eco-terrorism. Or... <laughs> right, yeah. Well, here's the thing. What Sep- is he all for? Se- What's his star sign? <laughs> so, yeah, Sep- Sephiroth's thing is that he he was a part of, like, Shinra's highest-ranking military force called Soldier, which was, like, this super soldier uh, thing. And Cloud used to be a part of it, too. Uh and, they, and they're, they're the main thing in the super soldier thing, I imagine, was just giving them unnecessarily large swords. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The unnecessarily large fo- swords seem to be part of the super soldier thing. Cool. Love that for them. Like, he went crazy and uh, started killing people and was planned to and destroy the world, but Same. he died before that could happen and everyone thought he was dead but then but Surprise. that that's not relevant to later so the clouds like hallucinating like seeing sephiroth and it's and like this never happens in the original game because again sephiroth was a twist villain and thus you don't really meet him until much later but this time around they know people love him so they're gonna put a minute more yeah and so right. like here they're all, they they do all... they're like you already know he's coming so here's some foreshadowing that you could have used more. 10 years ago yeah like yeah so like here they're just like oh we're not even bothering with the foreplay we're just going into sephiroth morotically tormenting cloud <laughs> oh boy uh, cloud of uh, cloud snaps out of hallucination and like uh, as he's like uh, joining back up with the rest of the group group because they had to split up to not draw suspicion to themselves. Uh, he meets Air, and another significant difference is like she's being surrounded by these ghosts that no one can see, and these ghosts weren't in the original game. Hmm. Like not at not, all, not just not till not, later, not at all. Like not not even a little bit, and that is pretty significant but you know uh cloud uh, sees the ghost too he leads her away from the ghost and then they get found by shinra Aerith runs runs away and cloud like escapes shinra 
Uh, he meets up with the rest of Avalanche on the train, where uh, Barrett explains a little more about uh, the world, uh, Shinra's control over it, how they're uh, using Mako to suck the planet dry, and also the infrastructure of Midgar. It's split into several sectors, with like a, a upper echel- all the upper echelon like being on top of those sectors, built on a plate. So it's like all everybody who isn't like rich lives in the basement of the city while everyone else gets to like be on top. So it's the city is built on a very on the nose way. <laughs> I wonder what that's a metaphor. For. <laughs> so they return to the hideout and that's where we meet best girl Tifa. Cause Tifa. you know, we, al- we also, and she, she's a part of the eco terrorist organization or yeah, what? Yeah. She ca- kind of is like, she like, uh, she's like where they meet up and she like, she's the one who connected them with cloud, but she's not like a part of it. If that, Make- she's not right she's not like part of the gang she's like the fucking organizer organizer person or yeah. whatever and we also meet like barrett's adopted daughter marlene who's uh like this uh adorable four-year-old go- little girl and also and is the four-year-old girl an eco-terrorist no, no. <laughs> bummer <laughs> it, but okay <laughs> but like uh I, I want to interject out of any character who has like gotten a glow up it's barrett like if anyone really benefited from this remake it's it's definitely him like in the original game he was an important character with like cool with a good story but also he was kind of the token black character who got overshadowed by the bigger stories and also looked Oof. a little bit like mr t Oof. <laughs> but like that's the only, the only black person that they had to model him after at the time <laughs> but no here they really improve upon his character like they keep what's like really appealing about him from the original but also like expand more on it and is marlene a a new character or was she also uh, in the original oh marlene was always in the original yeah gotcha uh you know he's got like this big dad -er, dad energy to him and also he's like a lot more like he brings his like eco terrorist beliefs to the front forefront so you know you get a better sense of like who he is like if like i really like barrett and I'm so glad he got got the treatment he did. I especially like when he like takes off his glasses and he just reveals that he has these beautiful eyes, and I'm like, God damn! <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, unlike in the original, uh, a- after Cloud gets paid for that mission, Barrett doesn't hire Brinkin for the follow-up they're going to do. Cloud and Tifa kind of go around the city and do some side quest stuff that so that they can, like, expand a little upon the first disc because this game only covers that and uh then we go on a detour with big swedge and jesse uh and this detour wasn't in the original game but it feels like something that would be in the original game and it gets to expand upon the those three characters who didn't get a lot uh, in the original uh so you know all good stuff we get a flashback that was in a different scene, but was put uh, somewhere here where where we get to see, like, Cloud and Tifa's, like, uh, childhood, uh scene from the childhood. And it's a really great scene that, like, recreates it and, like, pretty much justifies why I have this remake. Because in the original, it's an important scene, but also, like, because of the technology, you can't really give it the oomph that, like... It has here so good stuff. It's like, oh yeah, it's meant meant to be sweet and touching, but everyone does have polygons for hands, so you don't really get the full effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, yeah, good stuff. So they get back to Sector Seven. Sector Seven. Oh shit, we're into Transformers now. No. Let's go. Get out of here. Anyways. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but now like those ghosts that we see that we're seeing around Earth are now all over Sector Seven, and like. Our heroes uh, and like the main party has to like fight the ghosts, but there's too many. And then Jesse gets hurt, and uh, and when she gets hurt, all the ghosts leave. And Barrett's like, "Ah, oh, man, we need a replacement. Cloud, I'll hire you to, who take her place in the upcoming mission." And and no one gives a fuck about the fact that like unexplainable ghosts just attacked. It's like, well, this really puts a hamper in our eco terrorist plan. I mean, what can you do? Nobody really understands what these yeah, things are. Fair uh, enough. And so Cloud goes on the mission like he was originally supposed to. So they go plant the bomb, but oh no, it's an ambush. The Shinra organization or company is 
like we are uh, putting this out live or show the audience that they can come to us for protection and we are going to uh, sh- make you out to be the bad guys e- even though they were actually part of part of the contributing factor to why the bomb explosion was bigger than it was supposed mm-hmm. to be uh, I mean they were still trying to set up a they bomb They were there, still right? trying to set up a bomb <laughs> No, casually. Okay. <laughs> just, just to be real clear. Yeah, here. no. The plan <laughs> was to just like uh, jam the control systems, not like straight up blow the whole thing to Kingdom Come. Oh, I see. Which is what ended up happening. Uh, anyways, gotcha. so the they fight the boss, next boss on live television, and you know a- along the way, he Barrett's like practicing his uh, uh, what he's gonna say to the cameras, so that like Avalanche <laughs> looks good. <laughs> really funny i love that and like when the machine is des- is destroyed it like destroys the walkway they were walking on tifa and baird were able to uh, get to solid ground but cloud like falls f- from like all the way from the upper echelon to uh to and crashes through the ceiling of a church and bed of flowers like cushions his fall as one does as one does classic and that's where he meets Aerith again you know they ha- have a little back and forth and Another thing I really like is that they really captured Aerith's personality well. Like, the stereotype is that she's, like, soft, uh, healing mage. But uh, the reality is she's actually quite uh, spunky. She's not like the Virgin Mary type. She's, like, uh, she has, like, a lot of depth to her character. And I think they really get that across. She, like, teases Cloud a lot, and it's great. And that's when the Turks, which are, like... Uh, black ops agents for Shinra, basically the CIA, come up and with Reno <laughs> and uh, with uh, one of the main guys, main Turks, Reno, who uh, uh, want to like cap- capture Aerith. And Aerith uh, tell asks Cloud uh, to bring her home and protect her, and and she'll pay him. And and so they uh, make their escape. Along the way, they come across the ghost, but they're not attacking this time. It, the only thing they really do is keep Cloud from killing Reno, and that's it. Interesting. And so they make it to Eric's house where Cloud meets her mom, and uh, uh, let's see, she convinces him to stay the night. And uh, uh, while he, uh, Cloud is alone, Eric's mom says to him, "Hey, I don't like that she's getting caught up in all this dangerous shit." And Cloud's like, "Fair enough, I'll sneak out." <laughs> he's like yeah that fucking checks out there's ghosts i've got a big sword my hair is all animated this is not the place for this person to be he he (laughs) and he tries to sneak out but like Aerith catches up with them and uh uh, yeah he's not he's not a particularly inconspicuous design i would say uh anyway anyways uh so on their way to uh back to sector seven uh we learn a little bit more about Aerith. Uh, as she talks about like a person she used to know named Zach, and uh, they spot uh, Tifa being taken away uh, on a chocobo drawn carriage to Don Corneo's mansion, Chocobo. and they explain that like Don Corneo is like this slimy ass crime boss. So like we got to figure out what the hell's going. Slimy ass crime boss. Oh yeah, slimy ass baby. <laughs> Shout it. <laughs> He does all the slimy ass crimes. He does oh, all. Oh, I mean, uh, you're not. I will explain to you later. But right, wait, so, like, they're wait, intrigued wait, 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 and wait. horrified. Does Jeff know what a chocobo is? A chocobo <laughs> is like because I feel like that's important here. It's like this fantasy bird that's kind of like an ostrich, but way the fuck more adorable, and comes with this. They're like, sur- so cute. W- and comes like with the, the surf rock theme, fine. and it's great. Uh, they're so chocobo. Great. So. What you look like, motherfucker. Yeah, I just so, feel like we went through that part really quickly, and I was like, oh, but they're cute. We should talk oh, about yeah. how cute they are. They're pretty cute. <laughs> All right. They look, like, they look like what you would expect a, uh, a freshly hatched uh, chick to, to uh, grow up into instead of turning into just an ugly-ass chicken. Okay. Yeah. You know how, how dare you insult chickens? Chickens are adorable. But <laughs> I, I'm just saying chocobos are cuter than chickens. That's all I'm saying. Okay, fair. But so, uh, Cloud and... Or, Cloud and Aerith are like, we got to figure out what's going on. So they go to Walmart. Excuse me? Wal- Walmart. I was explaining what Walmart is. Walmart is like. This. Yeah, it's fucking called Walmart. Like Walmart. It's the and dumbest game. shit I've ever goddamn heard. How long has Walmart been around? This game was released in 1994. 
Or the oh, original. Walmart's oh. older than 94, right? When, is, when did Walmart come uh, out? It, it was established in 1962. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say, it was like definitely before the fucking 90s. <laughs> it was incorporated in 69. Okay, uh... Nice. So, yeah, definitely uh, ripping off Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. Okay, but... He- you know, for the longest time, I, like, in movies and stuff, whenever I, like, there was a movie that had a Walgreens in it, and I legitimately, because we didn't have Walgreens in our fucking area for the longest time, mm-hmm. I legitimately thought that Walgreens was, like, just, like, a fucking uh, legal safe off-brand Walmart to use in, <laughs> in, in that movie, and then I fucking encountered a real Walgreens, and I was like, I didn't know that was a real place. Yes, God. So yeah, Wal- Wal- Market is like this sleazy underbelly. I wonder what that's just like the real Walmart. Say. Yeah, <laughs> wonder what the metaphor for that was. <laughs> and and we learn that Corneo is looking for a bride, and uh, gross. And he only entertains women with an endorsement from these three major uh, people. So they managed to get an endorsement for Aerith. But now they need to figure out how to get an endorsement for Cloud. So what they do is dress Cloud up. I'm like... sorry. What? <laughs> Why? Wait, 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 wait. Maybe I, maybe I was okay. fucking uh, not listening or something. Why the fuck are they trying to marry off Aerith to some random sleaze dude okay. in Walmart? No, no. They're they're not trying to marry off Aerith to Aerith. some sleaze dude. They're, they're trying to get into the mansion. But, like, you know, mansions heavily guarded. It's like. Oh, it's like a heist I, thing. I it's like a heist I see. thing, yeah. I, I, so, under the pretense of. So, why does fucking Cloud have to. Why does Cloud also have to get married to this guy? Because he's a pretty boy. And he needs to be in because he's the muscle. He, he, needs, he needs to be in there, but he's a dude. And so, Corneo is not going to let him in. So. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so they're going to fucking. They're, they're going to dress, like <laughs> dress him up like a. They're going to dress him up like a woman. Get him endorsement. Oh my. All right, and sneak and, him in, it. and it's and it's hilarious because like, uh, you know, Cloud is just super self serious dude, and he's having to do this, <laughs> and and like Aerith is like uh, teasing him about it a lot, and it's funny as hell. Uh, That's very good. And and so they get in, they meet Tifa, and she's like surprised to see Cloud in in a dress, which is. Again, funny. Uh, and Corneo comes down. He's like, you know, his sleazy motherfucker self. And he picks Cloud to be his bride. And then, like, just... Get wrecked. And, like, just uh, goes to his henchman. You can have the rest. And, the, and like... Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And, like... I don't like that. Yeah. I mean, so, like, Cloud goes with Corneo. Tifa and Aerith uh, fight their way through a bunch of henchmen. And at one point... And at one point, like, uh, Aerith, like, beats one dude with a steel chair, and it's great. That is nice. peak Aerith. It's peak Aerith energy right there. <laughs> Classic Aerith beating up people with chairs. Yeah. Love Aerith. <laughs> yeah. And, and another thing I want to uh, dress upon is that Aerith and Tifa have a really good, like, dynamic between each other. Like, they may be, it may be like a love triangle, but they're clearly the best of friends gal pals gal pals yes just gals being pals yes gals being pals <laughs> uh, is it any surprise that what's the- better than this just a couple of gals being pals <laughs> <laughs> is it any surprise that the fans like to ship the two together because yeah but, yeah yeah they're yeah, just they- gals being pals yeah no lgbt <laughs> stuff here clearly not <laughs> Clearly. No. <laughs> so, so you know they fuck- not in the nineties, Jocelyn. Come on now, and not in the remake that came out. Was it last year? Oh uh, yeah, the remake came out last year. Yeah, yeah. Do, so, do they get to be gay finally? Spoiler alert. No, I'm afraid oh, not. Oh. That's fair. No, Square Enix was probably not trying to, uh, you know, fucking Square, piss off all of the Square Enix is really, really good at the not so subtle subtext. That's what they. Yeah. That's what they do. If only it was just text and not subtext. I mean, I imagine, like, yeah. manage- management's like, no, but the devs are like, come on! Yes. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. And- well, because, like, just, I mean, especially when doing a remake of a game, and I'm not fucking condoning this this line of thought, but I'd imagine that, you know, they're like, well, this is a fucking property from the 90s, and we know if we go and, like, you know, 
quote unquote switch characters to being gay that people are going to get really outraged about it. I mean, which like, is... especially they... when they're the two main love interests for the main character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like them, them being gal pals was like in the original game too. This is very, it, it would be like one of those situations where like, you know, the subtext was clearly there in the nineties, but then if they went and like hard switched it over now, then people would be like, there was no, fucking they were just friends why did they have to be gays yeah you know what exactly. i mean yeah <laughs> because fucking Tifa the people play these games make are their horrible way, make their way to <laughs> corneo's room making the way uh, downtown walking fast making the way <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm just completely derailing each other i'm so sorry cloud cloud like takes off the dress and corneo's like ah oh, jeez I, I'm gonna be interrogated. And <laughs> oh, like, geez. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. You no, know, like, cause, like, you, see. <laughs> guess I'm gonna be interrogated now. <laughs> like, cause, like, in the original game, when Ma- Cloud made his reveal, he's like, a man! While in this, he's like, ah, you were a man. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, ma- that's a good change to make simply because, you know, yeah. less transphobic. But yeah. also, it's just so funny to me, right? Like, he may be a sleeve, but he's a progressive sleeve. Sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. yeah. So oh, anyway, they, they interrogate Corneo, and he reveals that, like, Shinra plans to drop the freaking plate on uh, Sector 7. Uh, mm-hmm. And, like, doing so would kill everyone that lives in Sector 7. Oh, no, Sector Bummer. 7. Bummer. That's where all the people we care about live. And then he, like, throws open a trap door that leads them down the sewers. They make their way through the sewers. A lot of fun banter. Tifa and Aerith teasing Cloud a lot for being a sad sack. <laughs> well, when they... How could you be a sad sack with that hair and that fucking sword? <laughs> when they make their way to the pillar, they find that, like, Big Switch, Jesse, and Barrett are uh, trying to uh, stop Shinra from blowing up the... Uh, sector and uh, we see like Wedge falling and here is an important distinction in the original he falls to his death here he like uses a grappling hook hook to like uh, slow his descent and he actually manages to live hmm. what was the reason for that like I'll get to that one? I'll get to that okay uh, okay <laughs> okay so so, like, Cloud and Tifa go up while uh, Wedge evacuates as many citizens as he can, and... Eric... Wait, are we still on fucking disc one? This is all disc one. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know. It's... Okay, wait, is the whole remake... Okay, we haven't gotten... Wait. Wait. The whole... Re... The the whole part two remi... came out, right? Part two never came out. The whole remake uh, right oh, now oh, okay, is still okay, on okay. part two. We're, we're just going okay. through. We're just going I was like, I'm, we're, I'm not, we're not fucking 40 minutes a third of the way through this discussion. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole game. Oh, okay. God. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So, no doubt, no doubt. All right. So, and like Aerith gets Marlene to her house, which is in a different sector, so it's safe. Nice. And so Cloud and Tifa go up the pillar. Along the way, they find, you know, Biggs and Jesse who die. Uh, and then they oh. fight oh. Uh, two members of the Turks, Reno from before and Rude. And the interesting thing is they win. And they, it looks like they're about to stop the uh, plate from falling, which in the original game, the plate falls. All the... Oh, fuck. Everyone in the in Sector 7, except for our main heroes and Marlene, uh, die. So... That's rough. And... And it looks like they're actually going to win. But then, like, the ghosts start coming out and, like, uh, uh, those push, ghosts push them away. And, you know, Reno and Rude get their uh, second breath, go to the panel, blow shit up, and then escape on a helicopter. The other guys, uh, so our main heroes, like, escape uh, too, but, like, Sector 7 falls down. And, like, it's a really chilling scene, like... Sorry, wait. Describe to me again what the plate is. It's on a plate. There's a plate above it. What? What's what? The, what's the plate? All right. So did I miss that? Okay. So like all the sectors live below like just these giant massive plates, and on top of those, uh, above those plates is like the upper echelon. Right? If you, I see. If you, so like, if you fucking drop the plate, you're killing both of them basically. If if you drop the plate, you destroy the sector that's under the plate the upper echelon is not affected from what i understand but yeah that's wild but they all do fall a fucking city's height don't they 
Yes. Uh, I would okay. have to look at the fucking <laughs> infrastructure of Midgar again to give you more definitive answers. Okay. But canonically, for through whatever fucking reason, the upper echelon does not die. Yeah. That's what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, you know, and like uh, during like uh, all the uh, uh, scenes of destruction, we see that like Wedge had gotten uh, everyone everyone he could out and like he like was going back to his house to like save his cats and we see like wedge looking up and wedge you dumb piece of shit it's the, come on come on now come on my man and come like on. wedge dies uh <laughs> wedge you dumb piece of shit why did you wait a minute wait is wedge the one who was supposed to die earlier yeah wedge was the one who was supposed to die earlier oh. they changed it so he would die trying to save his cats it was a lot of cats <laughs> I mean, that's how I'd want to go out. <laughs> yeah, so our heroes escape, and they... No, 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 we, we're not fucking moving on from that just yet. <laughs> Excuse me. Why did... What was the reason for that change? Is there more to it There's than that? more to it! <laughs> oh, okay, we're gonna find out that fucking... The, the cats are all, are all the fucking ghosts, and they time-traveled back from, like, five minutes later or some shit like that, and caused this whole thing? That's my prediction. I'm putting it in right now. Go ahead, Shadow. Okay, our heroes escape, and Barrett's going berserk because uh, he thinks Marlene's dead. But, like, uh, Cloud and Tifa assure him, no, Aerith was able to uh, uh, get Marlene to safety. And, like, they get, like, a... Like, when, like, Reno and Rude were escaping, we do see, like, Aerith being in the helicopter they were escaping on. And she was like, don't worry, she's safe. And... Uh, so they go to uh, Eric's house, and yeah, Mar- Marlene is safe. And Eric's mother explains that uh, uh, came willingly with them so that they would leave Marlene alone. And so they make a plan to like save Eric the next morning. But before that, they go back to Sector Seven to see if they're they can save any stragglers. And they find that save any stragglers. How isn't the whole city smushed? Smushed. Hmm? The whole yeah. The isn't whole the whole fucking. The whole city's smushed, but like you know, the shit breaks apart and get. Oh, j- like okay. people trapped and yeah, yeah, people trapped in gotcha, gotcha. and stuff. That kind of stuff. But isn't there like a fucking city weighted disc on top of it? Like, wouldn't it just kind of? I. Whatever. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Whatever. Uh... Thinking too much about that, Jeffrey. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> wet, wedge, wedge survives. Survived some. Oh. Yeah, that's... Uh, did the cats survive? Uh, the cats <laughs> did survive. Uh, okay. But, like, the way he survived was, like, it turns out he was on top of this, like, Shinra research facility. And so, like, uh, when the plate came down, uh, he basically was able to escape through that. This research facility wasn't in the original game. But it's bas- it, the whole thing exists basically as a detour to save Wedge. You know, they save Wedge. <laughs> this man has escaped a couple deaths now. <laughs> oh my god, this man is unkillable. He cannot die. <laughs> uh, and he is now immortal. Uh, yeah, so they leave Wedge with uh, Mar- or Marlene and uh, Aerith's mom, and they go make their way to the top to, like, uh, save Aerith. And, like, they recreate, like, this uh, a big sort of climbing scene from the original game, uh... Uh, where in the original there was like a lot of puzzle solving and stuff here it's more like a atmospheric thing where they weigh up and uh fight th- through some dudes uh and i i think barrett has this new bit of dialogue barrett and tifa have this new bit of t- dialogue where they're like uh where they're like you know cloud I-, I didn't really get you but i think i do now this whole tough guy a stoic dude thing it's a front that's not who you really are and yeah that is that shows a good understanding of who cloud is like cloud is trying to play this aloof cool guy but really he's uh at heart this insecure kid with anime hair with anime hair yes do they all have anime hair uh yes no no actually okay <laughs> so why do they all think he's a fucking tough guy when he's the only person with fucking wild ass anime <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, because, like who Because because he's a he is a member of soldier, you know, super soldiers, lots of super soldiers. Oh, right, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Wait, and who doesn't have anime hair? Who doesn't have anime hair? Let's see. Barrett's got pretty normal hair. Tifa's just got 
Long hair. Let's see. Aerith. Aerith's is really anime. Aerith's pretty anime. Very Sep- big. S- yeah, Sephiroth's got anime hair. Vincent's got anime hair. Vincent's not really relevant to disc one, so don't worry about that. Look, they apply the anime hair very so. Some people do, some people don't. Just let's move on. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> So they're at Shin- Shinra's headquarter and they sneak up by like pretending to be tourists and then just like sneaking their way up the stairs. And like classic in the in the original game, what they did was like you were given a choice. Do you just want to go in guns a blazing fighting through the front door or go up these stairs sneakily without having to uh, alert anybody? And, uh, uh, you know, if you chose the stairs option, you basically ran up like. 40 flights of stairs <laughs> and it's oh and it's really funny because like you're running up the stairs and like barrett's complaining and tifo's like come, <laughs> come on we gotta do this and you know she's like a martial arts master so she is like better at going up the stairs than everyone else but like even That's really even she eventually gets tired and like everyone's just getting tired and until they get to the top and it's like or get to where the stairs end it's like oh my god fuck we should have just <laughs> fought everyone and they basically make that scene again and it's great i love that shit and they meet like the mayor of midgar who turned out to be the secret informant for avalanche uh and mm-hmm. like he was just like mad that like he was just a puppet puppet to like shinra because shinra really runs the show <laughs> like his office is even just like a small like janitor's locket locker in the Shinra building. <laughs> get wrecked. Get wrecked, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they find uh the head scientist Hojo who uh and like intercept him. They find Aerith and meet another member of the party, Red, who's like this like animal dude. Uh oh. Yeah, he's he he's like a member of a long lived species of like cat tiger things. Oh, that's news to me. (laughs) He's like the only non-human member of the group, so. What's his name? Are there generally a lot of non-humans in this world? Red 13. Uh, Red 13. No, there aren't a lot of non-humans in this world. or uh, So he's kind of like uh, unique, but. Whoa, he's dope looking. Oh, yeah, no, he's badass. It's fucking, fucking, what's his name? Kovu. Well, I was gonna say Chester. Uh, I was gonna say Chester the Cheetah, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like Chester the Cheetah and Kovu had a kid. That's yeah. Kovu from Lion King Two. Oh, of course. Sorry. Yeah, and and so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Sorry, the classic, well-known character Kovu from Lion he's King Two. He no, he is a very classic character. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> they start to approach like uh, this, like. A uh, thing that Hojo had in, in like this cap, uh, giant capsule, and it's uh, this uh, creature called Jenova, who's like this it being from beyond the stars who like eats planets. Uh, and like Same. Cloud senses starts sensing Jenova, and like he passes out. When he wakes up, you know everyone's like gone into a hi- hiding spot, and uh, uh, we're seeing like some of the ghosts and. Red explains that uh, these are called whispers. They are arbiters of fate, making sure that fate goes as intended. Uh huh. Hmm. Interesting. And then they get a message. So why has no one ever fucking seen them before? I- you'll understand later. Anyway, <laughs> how much later is there? <laughs> yeah, how much is Not left much. of this part one? <laughs> Not much. I, I'm, I'm. We're get. We're getting to the tail end of this. Don't worry. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. okay, so there, there's a message message from Wedge. Hey, we're bringing in reinforcements, and we're bringing in a help helicopter to help you escape. And uh, there, and you know, and then he dies again. That's the thing. <laughs> okay. Oh my Does god! Does he not die? <sighs> I let me explain. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so is there, uh, is, Jeff, is there an option that isn't death or life? Well, I guess we'll fucking find out, Jocelyn. Maybe it becomes one of the whispers or turns into a fucking Chester the Cheetah motherfucker. <laughs> uh, so they go they go along the way and they come across Sephiroth. Again, he doesn't really Ooh. appear in disc one, so 
Interesting. He uh, they're just like, who's that guy? He's got a big sword. Uh, I don't know. He's not relevant. I mean, to later. I mean, like Cloud, reckon- <laughs> Cloud and Tifa recognize him because like stuff that happens that's not really relevant to disc one. Uh, Sephiroth, fair. Cloud, Cloud, Sephiroth, and then they go. Then they part ways again, very Kingdom Hearts style. Sephiroth beats their asses and then like cuts the walkway, and they fall to like this uh, laboratory that like Ho- Hojo controls, and there is like this uh, detour. Yeah, so they make their way to the top with and meet the president of Shinra. And uh, before they really get to do anything, uh, Sephiroth comes in and stabs the president. And uh, and uh, from from three rooms away, I imagine. <laughs> I mean, he, co- he somehow <laughs> manages to come out of nowhere and sneak up on everybody. But anyways, and then Barrett's like, yo, what what's going on? Explain yourself, Sephiroth. And then Sephiroth stabs Barrett. And keep in mind, oh, no. Barrett is a character from the original games who survives till the end. So so why is he dying in the first third? <laughs> yeah. So and then uh, Sephiroth like unleashes this uh, uh, thing called the Genova Dream Dream Waker, who is like this giant monster that we have a boss fight with. And he make he he just walks off, and then like after beating the boss, uh, everyone's like really sad that Barrett dies. But then one of the ghosts come and heals Barrett, and he comes back, and they were like, "I thought you were dead," and he was like, I, <laughs> "Me too, bitch." I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ooh, this is uh, okay. Yeah. Quite a quite a liberal use of the term remake. Let me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like in the original one, yeah. the way the events go was that like. They get captured. They eventually get captured uh, while saving Aerith, and they were in these prison cells. They go to sleep and mm-hmm. wake up, and the doors are all open, and there's like blood all over the walls, and like dead people all over the place. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? They go up, see that the president is dead with Sephiroth's sword in his back, and they're like, and Cloud's like, oh, fuck, it's Sephiroth. And that's how it originally went down, but hmm. yeah, not this time. Uh, they no, it's, okay. So that's when they meet the son of the president, Rufus Shinra, who uh, uh, is basically like, I'm like the president, but even worse because I believe in fascism instead of just like trying to be a puppet, puppet trying to wait, 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 wait. Isn't Shinra the name of the organization that Cloud worked for? Yeah. Shinra is the name of the organization that Cloud worked for, and like it's the president, this dude's last name. Yeah, it's this dude's last name. You know, uh, <laughs> President Shinra owns the company, and oh, does... his last name was Shinra too. Okay, yeah. I missed okay. that. Okay, you know, uh, Cloud's like you. You guys get out of here, and I'll uh, and I'll uh, fight fight Rufus. And uh, so Cloud has his duel with Shinra. Tifa's like, I'm gonna stay behind to help Cloud Barrett. Aerith and Red uh, go have a boss fight to get out. Uh, and, like, everything's starting to come down because uh, Sephiroth's doing some screwy shit. Uh, and, <laughs> and, that uh, rascal. That feels like an understatement. And, and also, like, the ghosts are now, like, everywhere. They're just swarming the entire building for some reason. Uh, wet. And like wedge because they're trying to they're trying to course correct because the fucking plot of the game is so different from the original that they're like oh fuck fate is wrong we gotta go and that's why the ghosts are here yeah. is because the plot's not happening the way that it did the first time yeah and and, uh, and like wedge is in the building and like the ghosts are like attacking wedge and he's like you should have died twice already <laughs> motherfucker yeah and you know uh, we see like a cut cut a sort of cut to black and him saying. Uh, tell me I mattered, which was his last words in the original game. Uh, it's, All that. It's it's am- it's ambiguous whether he died or not. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Because it looks like he already died oh. twice already. Yeah. We'll find out in part two. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Tifa manages to save Cloud from falling off building. Uh, the rescue helicopter gets shot down by Rude and Reno, and Ru- or Rufus Shinra like gets away in his own helicopter with the Turks. So, so Cloud and Tifa, they, they meet up with uh, Barrett, Aerith, and Red, and they escape uh, by, like, uh, stealing a vehicle. Cloud's on a motorcycle, and they recreate a scene from the original scene from the original where, like, they're escaping, and Cloud has to, like, fend off uh, guards and soldiers and stuff while using his big-ass fuck-off sword on a motorcycle. <laughs> His sword as big as the motorcycle itself. Yes. I love uh, his exactly. motorcycle. 
Uh, and, you know, they're, it, they're escaping. And when you see the full view of the building, it's very clear the ghosts are all over the fucking place. Uh, Roof is like, what the hell is going on? Uh, but otherwise, the se- chase sequence is actually pretty normal. Uh, you, have a, you have a boss fight. And, like, there's, like, this uh, Midgar checkpoint. And, like, basically, if they pass that place and, like, get out of Midgar... The game is relatively unchanged, aside from a few who stuff, right? <laughs> but bitch, that ain't what happens. So Sephiroth, so Sephiroth appears, and everyone like stops, and he's like, "Follow me," and like shows off this rift, and they're like, "What? What is this?" And it's and they're like discussing like the whispers and what what the hell is going on, and basically. Whispers are trying to maintain de- maintain fate and stuff, and uh, they're like, "We follow Sephiroth into that. We could change fate. Do we want to do that?" And if you could change your fate, would you? <laughs> and and they're hesitant. And uh, Aerith is like, "Maybe we shouldn't mess with the way things are supposed to go." And then Cloud and the rest of the gang are like, "No." I don't, I don't, I don't like the, I don't like the idea of uh, my fate being determined. And it's important to note that, like, the original game had an ambiguous ending, right? So they do manage to meet mm-hmm. Sephiroth and stop Genova, but there's still a big ass. But wait, the original game had an ambiguous ending <clears throat> the, at the end of the first disc or at the end of the whole game? At the end of, okay, yeah. At the end of the whole <laughs> game, there is an ambiguous ending. Uh, okay. Right. And That's at the fun. very end, you know, they managed to beat Sephiroth. Cloud has his final showdown where he, like, shows that he's risen above by using his ultimate move, Omnislash, very anime stuff. Uh, they de- mm-hmm, they mm-hmm, got rid mm-hmm. of Genova, but there's still a big-ass meteor coming down. Uh, the planet, they can awaken the planet to save the world. And the problem with that is that while the planet's going to be okay... We're not, they're not sure if humanity will, if the planet will consider humanity a problem to it and thus try to wipe out all of humanity. And it ends on this big flash. That's how the original game ended. Now, of course, they're not aware of it in the remake, but I, I think the implication is very clear what's going on. And so Aerith opens the uh, uh, rift and they jump into this sort of surrealist place where they then have to fight fate itself. And, like, Fate's, like, using, like, all these attacks called sacred and inviolate, which I had to break out a dictionary for. Inviolate. It means something that should not be changed. Something that is sacred. Uh, sacrosanct. <laughs> uh, sacrosanct. You know? So, you know, in the surreal escape, every, everyone's, like, jumping from building to building. Teeth is punching through buildings. A cloud's cutting through shit. Uh, it's ridiculous. And this is all original fucking content, right? Like, no, this is not... No. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we have jumped off the fucking rails, okay? And, so, and, like, event... And, like, in the stage two part of the fight, you're, like, fighting these three spirits. And, like, you know, if you use the scan materia to, like, learn their weaknesses and also get some flavor text, the flavor text will describe the three spirits as, like, a being from another universe who primarily fights with a sword. A being from another universe who primarily fights with a gun. And a being from a, another universe who primarily fights with fists. And keep in mind, Cloud uses a sword. Barrett has a gun for an arm. Tifa has, like, or is the world's greatest martial artist, so... Or, alternatively, it's the fucking, uh, the, the me characters from Smash Brothers. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> alternatively, oh my yes, god. but... But yeah, so yeah, f- pretty clear that the implication is that you're basically fighting, like, the spirits of, like, the original. They're not, huh. like, keep in mind, they're not actually, like, Cloud, Tifa, and Bear from the original game, but, like, you know, the metaphor. Sure. <laughs> Wonder what this is That's... a metaphor for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's very it's all clear. about the metaphors. It, look, this whole <laughs> sequence in this uh, place is clearly, like, one big old metaphor right now. Like, we've we've stopped, like being di- diegetic and it's all just sort of like dream logic now uh wild but, okay <laughs> but yeah but yeah you know they fight they eventually kill fate itself 
and then Sephiroth shows up. That seems like it would have bad implications. So Sephiroth shows up, and it's and he he's like sup, and they they like start sup. fighting Sephiroth, uh, and then like Sephiroth drags Cloud into uh, this place that he describes as the edge of creation itself, and so and they. Ha- Oh, an important thing is while they're fighting fate, I almost forgot this, sorry. Uh, while they're fighting fate, they're like seeing images of like uh, stuff that happened in the original game, right? Like we see the post credits of the original game. and Like in its but original like graphics or? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, do we do we see the cone faces or do we see like actual emotion? Uh, uh, they're using like the cutscenes instead of the in-game graphics. So it does look better than it did uh than it would have yeah so okay so uh, it's like it's like mostly updated yeah it's mostly updated uh uh, yeah so so uh uh, and we see like the post cred scene where we see like old an older version of red like looking at the wounds of midgar yeah and Mm -hmm. you know in the original it was uh left ambiguous whether this is just midgar hundreds of years after and humanity is fine or if humanity really is gone uh, they were like, "What? What did we just see?" And Red was like, "What may come to be if we are not successful?" And uh, interesting. And, and then, and we see flashes of other like the scenes from the past games, like uh, the death of Zach Fair, who is like this character who dies before the events of the game, but is like really important to Black Cloud's backstory. Uh huh. Uh, and we see like the opening like scenery shot. Of like the iconic er- of Earth's death, and it's like, and it's like they don't show Earth's death, but like you know, it, the moment you see that image, you're like, oh, oh, you're gonna go there, like, like, because huh. under- so basically, what you're telling me is that this game is not a remake, but a canonical like multiversal sequel. Is that the implication? Yeah. Like this is yeah. this is this takes place in the same continuity as the original game, but is not in the same universe as the original game, or is not in the same I, uh, multiverse or whatever. Yeah, or I, is I, in the same. I, what you know what I mean? That yeah, is like I, a no, no, alt reality. Yeah, some, it's something like that, right? And like here's something really important. To sort know. of like the fucking. Uh, the the ruby and sapphire remakes of the pokemon game where they're just like oh yeah there's a fucking multiverse in the pokemon universe that's why there's some pokemon just don't exist in other games or whatever right yeah it kinda... yes yeah, it's, it's it's something like that <laughs> yeah so like here's the thing like the implications of that because like here's the thing about Eric's death in the original uh, you know how like a lot of people their first experience with mortality was like watching Bambi or like watching the Lion King. There are a lot of people sure. for whom that was first experience with the idea of mortality. And also it's like a really heartrending scene for a lot of people. And like one of the most famous scenes from final fantasy seven. Uh, mm-hmm. So the idea that like it, like it was even to a point, like you can find like old video game articles, <clears throat> like ho- with like hoax stuff about like, uh, Oh, you can save Aerith if you do all this ridiculous shit. And gotcha. And no, so in this game, though, Aerith doesn't actually die. Is what you're telling me, or at least not yet. In this game, well, they haven't really gone to the point where where Aerith where, was supposed would have to been die. Part two, yeah. right? That that would have been yeah way gotcha. after the, that would have been way after the fact of disc one. But the, but they have already set up the precedent they, because yeah Wedge, yeah they're set, Wedge is alive right yeah yeah they're setting up the precedent that hey this iconic scene that's like the first thing you think of when you think of Final Fantasy 7 might not be there and that is such that's a, interesting that is such a ballsy thing uh yeah do right. you think that they're going to what do you do you think that they're going to make it optional or do you think that they're going to stay like make it set up the precedent that it could be optional but then still make it like inevitable i because i feel like that would be an interesting play and which would you want them to do Chad? and also are we getting a part two well we're definitely getting yeah, a part awesome. we're definitely getting a part two this game sold like hotcakes uh okay cool <laughs> but man I, I don't know what they're planning to do but i am curious to see see what they plan uh let me just finish this i just have a few more sentences and 
I will <laughs> okay, be done. I sure. swear. Oh, All right. So Sephiroth takes Cloud to what he calls the edge of creation. And they have this like almost shot for shot remake of like their final duel where like Cloud uses the Omni Slash on him. But like, mm-hmm. but like this time, like uh, Sephiroth like beats Cloud because, you know, it's Cloud at the beginning and not Cloud at the end and stuff uh, after all the right. character development. And he's telling Cloud, this is seven seconds before the end. Make good use of it. And then he just flies Ooh. off, presumably to homoerotically torment Cloud and Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and like, you know, Cl- the they leave and like they end up getting ejected out of that dreamscape place and you know you, and you start seeing like montages and like uh you see uh you see like zach the scene where he was originally supposed to die he doesn't die and brings cloud to midgar and it's like how did this brings up so many questions because mm-hmm. his death is actually integral to glad's pack story is he still alive did he just die in a different way? Who the fuck knows? And we leave off with them midi- leaving Midgar in a scene reminiscent to something that was in the original. And like Aerith looks back at Midgar and she says, I miss the steel sky. And which is harkening back to a line she said earlier. But of course, the metaphor is very clear. In this case, the steel sky is like the game they're leaving or like the events of the original game that they're leaving behind with the wide open sky ahead of them being the uncertain future uh, that they're moving into. And that's how Final Fantasy Mm VII ends. Another important note, one more important note, uh, there's also like a shot of like Biggs uh, and shows that Biggs is alive strongly implies Jesse is alive. (laughs) So like, (laughs) none of the three people... Were they supposed... They were supposed to... Were they supposed to die in the original? They were supposed to die in the original... You know, so, like, the fact that they're alive, it's like, oh, okay. (laughs) They're just like, fuck it, everyone's alive. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and that's, and that's Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, the original game ended with just them moving past the checkpoint, getting out of Midgar, and, like, with a, a nudge that Sephiroth's still out there, and they gotta stop Sephiroth, and thus kicking off the larger plot. And here, it just went off the fucking rails. And that's Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm just... Yeah, I'm wondering like how much like they must certainly go back to some formula that existed in in the the latter discs in the original one, right? Otherwise, there would be fucking riots, right? So I'm just wondering how they're gonna turn it around to get it back to, or if they're just gonna continue off the deep end and just be like, yeah, no, this is a different story now. Fuck off. I like, I you know legit do not know, and that's or if they're just like setting it up to like basically. I don't know, because, like, they're doing a remake, right? So, like, when you're playing a remake, you basically know how the plot is going to go, right? Like, you know all the story beats. So I wonder if they're, like, setting up all this ambiguity to make people who are playing the game be like, wow, I genuinely don't know how this is going to go anymore, even though I've played this game before. And then maybe, like, hit all of the same notes that they did before so that, like, the... I don't know, to, like, recreate a sense of the, the unexpected or whatever. Yeah. So that you don't actually know what's going to happen, even if a lot of the same stuff does happen, that would be kind of yeah, an interesting. I, f- I feel like they could yeah, probably really play. play with like the idea of fate being something you can't super change. Where like they all is you... right. <clears throat> eventually they get back to where things would have been in the original yeah. somehow, some mm-hmm. way. Yeah, these are. Yeah, and it's funny you guys mentioned that because here's my initial reaction to this ending. I was at first furious like i <laughs> yeah because it's different at all right yeah 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 and yeah because you're and expecting a remake i was expecting a remake and i got nomura doing his nomura shit right here uh yeah he really turned this into a into a fucking kingdom hearts game didn't he yeah <laughs> and like keep in mind uh most of the people who made the original game are working on this game so this isn't like corporate fan fiction this is Right. The original devs. This like, is the original devs fan fiction. This is what they the original, wanted. <laughs> the original devs doing their own, doing something unexpected. Uh, and like initially I was angry, but like as time went on, I kind of started to get it and I kind of started to like what they did. And I'm actually excited to see because you know that experience you have when you read a good book or 
finish a good show where it's like it ends just how you want it. It's great, but there's a sadness because like you'll never get to because re- it's over. It's yeah. over, and you'll never really get to experience it again. And you could rewatch it, but at the end of the day, uh, that first reaction is always the first reaction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I realize Final Fantasy VII is new to me all over again. And in doing all that insane Nomura shit that they did, fi- I get to re-experience Final Fantasy for the first time. Yeah, it's kind of wild, too, because it's like... It, it, it feels a little bit different than just, like, doing an adaptation of it and then, you know, having some details change for whatever writing reasons. Because, like, it, it's, it's, it's doing that... Uh, Oh my god, like fucking, I guess Colin's on this goddamn episode of the podcast, because I'm gonna fucking talk about Star Trek right now, but, oh uh, <laughs> it's like doing the thing that the, the, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies did, where it's just like, yes, like, you know, notion, like, uh, you know, practically these are reboots of, to tell new stories with the same characters, but notionally it actually does exist within the same multiverse, right? So it's not, yeah. It's like a way of telling the same stories new, like with new takes without like erasing yes, any of stuff. the original. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, that's still that it all happened the way that you played it in the first game, too. It's just that was in a different alternate reality of whatever's happening here. So it's I don't know. It's kind of an interesting, interesting concept. Yeah, because I think still, in some cases works out. But. You still feel validated for having gone through the first game. Yeah. Sure, yeah. But I right. do I do as someone who's never played either, now I feel like I have to play 7. Well, see, now Jocelyn, it's it's interesting that you say that cuz I think that's probably a, a good way to to turn into the uh the ratings section of this podcast cuz unless you have any other glaring questions, I mean, I think Chowder explained it pretty well. I don't yeah. have a lot else to ask. Um I think we should probably move on and and talk about I don't know, our, our, our intrigued interest in the topic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there we, we, there we are. We're in the fucking ratings. Thank you, Chowder, for that, uh, that description. It was, uh, very informative and, uh, it was, it was fun to listen to. Um, now we're going to be sort of rating the topic, I guess, question mark. Chowder, you know this game better than I do. Do you have a scale you want to set this to? One to ten? Okay, I've got two ideals for the scale. One to ten chocobos, pretty standard, easy stuff. <laughs> sure. Or <laughs> one to ten flashbacks of, uh, Sephiroth homoerotically tormenting Cloud while surrounded by flames. Well, I like that one. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's a tough choice. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the homoeroticism, though. Gotcha. That's where it always it, it always turns it, that way in the end, doesn't it? it um, <laughs> the marking of good. All right, media. so I, I, yeah, we, we Jocelyn, I'll, I'll have we we can start with you, I guess. I, I, what are we fucking are saying? Like our interest in going to play the game, or our interest in where the story is going? I don't know. You, you um, fucking t- you just go for it. Yeah. So so qu- question again: Which PlayStation is the first version on? The first version uh, is on the original PlayStation. You can also like get it on uh, Steam and uh, PlayStation Network, and uh, basically you can get it. You, so you can play it now on the current yeah, systems. You can, yeah, you can play it now on the current systems. Uh, okay, that helps. Yeah. Because <clears throat> like for me. I feel like I now would want to play the fir- the original first mm-hmm. and then play this one because I know that they're going to be so different. Yeah. Um, but then I have to go through those graphics again. Yeah, that, that's the thing. But like, here's the thing. The story so, is genuinely good. Uh, if you can get past those janky PS1 graphics, you have a wonderful story. I, I genuinely believe that. That's that, that that's the thing. That's the hang up is that I'm already bad at video games, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I already like I can only replay Kingdom Hearts because I've played it and I know how to do it so I can get over the jankiness of it. Um mm-hmm. I have a harder time doing that with games I didn't play as a child. So it's really tough cuz I'm I'm so intrigued. Like I'm very intrigued. I will probably watch let's plays. Yeah, let's yeah, let's say. plays are a good way too. I mean, because it's a JRPG, it's a very linear story. I want to know more, so I will give this a 
nine homoerotic moments between Sephiroth and uh, Cloud. Cloud. While surrounded by flames. Yeah, while surrounded by flames, of course. Um, so I want to see that. I want to. I want to see how it all unfolds. So like, I, I'm giving a nine, but like, will I play it? Probably not. Yeah, that's, that, that's kind of where I'm. Yeah, that's definitely fair. What I, What I really wish. Uh, what I really hope Square Enix does, since the remake is going in this direction, is that they do mm-hmm. like do like a graphical overhaul of the original game. They don't have the source material, but or not the source material, the source code. They don't have the source yeah. code. But like here's the thing. Final Fantasy VII is one of the most beloved games. They would easily make their money back if they just made God, it. could you imagine? They're like, hey, we, we did the final Final Fantasy VII remake, but it was a little bit different. So here's the vanilla version of that remake. <laughs> here's the, here's with, the with, real with, remake. With like the updated graph <laughs> with like graphics that are more yeah. modern. But it's yeah. Nomura, so it's gonna be called like Final Fantasy um It's Final Fantasy VII, right? Final Fantasy yeah. 7 Zero, the original. It's, yeah, it yeah gonna it's, it's gonna be like some really long ass title under it, and that's how we'll know it's the real remake. Yeah, uh, we should have known just from the fact that they called it Final Fantasy 7 Remake that this was gonna be something completely different. That's on us for not for underestimating Nomura, honestly. Yeah, oh, no, I should have seen that coming. But here I am, Jeff. Uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I would, I, I'm kind of in the same boat as Jocelyn, probably like an 8 or a 9. I'm going to go with 8. Like, I'm really interested to hear how the story goes, probably from, you know, listening to you or watching Let's Plays or just fucking listening to YouTubers talk about it or something. But uh, probably pretty unlikely that I'm going to go back and play these games just because I'm not a huge video game person. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, you color me intrigued, like even just on principle, if nothing else, of um, doing this sort of remake that's not really a remake, but yeah. it's kind of a remake. But yeah. I'm, I'm interested fun. to see how, how buck wild it goes in the in the last, uh, you know, in the next installments of it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Chowder, do you have any... I mean, what? obviously, I know you're into it, but do you, do you have any uh, fucking thoughts to throw in to I, that? I, I think I effect? already uh, said it. I'm, is Final Fantasy VII is now new to me all over again, and I'm... I honestly respect sort of the guts it took for the devs to do this because this, yeah, this would have been an easy slam dunk for them. Uh, but they instead uh, rested on their laurels and... No, wait, that's not the right... I was going to say, they definitely did rest on their laurels for this game. <laughs> no, uh, no they, they, they really like... They stuck stuck to their guns. They stuck to their yes. guns. How Thank about you. that one? Yeah. They stuck to their guns and they wanted to, and they basically said, no, I don't want to keep making the same games from 10 years ago for the rest of my life. Sure. So. We'll just mostly do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just, just Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and we're go- we're going to go in this direction and uh, we're going to take whatever consequences from this ambition we do. And I respect that a lot. And... Mm-hmm. For all that, and because the game itself is actually really good, the action's great, the character's great, uh, I'm going to give it 10 homoerotic Sephiroth flashbacks wreathed in, fl- <laughs> wreathed in flames out of 10. Perfect. Sounds all right. right. Well, yeah, this is, that was, wow. That, it, maybe not as, as uh, fucking convoluted as as, uh, as 10 it was, but, but still almost. had... <laughs> Almost, yeah. There was still <laughs> like a... time shenanigans, so yeah. right. More convoluted in some ways, but I think that is going to wrap it up for us today, folks. Uh, thank you for listening to the Common Geeking program. Again, I have been your host, uh, Jeff Levitt. You can find me. Uh, I've got an Instagram called Things I Wish Existed, and there's the dot between each word. And I haven't posted in months. Uh, and I have a YouTube toy review channel, if that's your thing, Alchemist Prime Reviews, and if not, no worries. And again, I've been joined by Chowder and Jocelyn. Uh, you guys have any, uh, social media handles or fucking whatever you want to pimp out? You want to go Chowder, first? You, wanna go f- oh, yeah. you can go first. He okay. said you first. I, I said Chowder, <laughs> oh, but Jocelyn. I, I, I didn't. Just so the people, just so we can fucking, you know, get our, our story straight. We don't want, you know, people looking for Chowder's social media on Jocelyn's yeah, handles. I don't, they, they might not be able to tell you apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Time Will Chowdery. 
Uh, you can also check out the Common Be- Geeking Program Twitter page at Geeking Program, where that I run, uh, basically. And you can also find me as a member of a real play podcast called Dice Populi. You can find that on yeah. DicePopuli.com. That was, that was so yeah, it's a, a lot of the same people from uh, from Common Geeking program, like Colin and Ryan and Pat and Matt. So if you've listened to a lot of our old episodes, it's a very familiar cast, and it's a it's a good time. Jocelyn, uh, you can uh, if you want more <laughs> Sword Boy anime esque stuff, watch Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart on Cartoon Network and HBO Max. Uh, a lot of Final Fantasy fans made that show, so it's a very good time, and I also worked on it. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, that's an important <laughs> detail here. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it, it helps me. Uh, I mean, sort of, not really, but please watch it. It's a very good time. It, it, it helps you emotionally, if nothing else. It, there you go. And uh, otherwise, you work into it. You I mean, I guess you could follow me it. on Twitter, but like, I don't, I don't tweet. So, joss.bark, I think. I don't remember my... <laughs> I'm too tired for this. <laughs> Skip that. <laughs> I don't remember. All right. Well, yeah, it. you're going to have to put in some of your own work if you want to find Jocelyn on Twitter. But uh, yeah, uh, our next episode will be airing on the third Friday of February, which is going to be the 19th. So uh, no, wait, that's this one. My B. Uh, <laughs> third Friday of March. That's when the next one is going. That's... Really? Also the 19th? Huh. It's because February is a perfect square this time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's cool. Good for February. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> thank you for listening to this uh, podcast, subscribing, sharing, everything else that you do, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you next time. Ciao. Bye. I knew you were going to do it, Durr. This episode of the Common Geeking Program is hosted by Jeff Levitt. Join this episode by Timel Chaudhary and Jocelyn Barkenhagen. This episode is sponsored by Feedback Loops. I'm overwhelmed with my work, and so I put it off, which creates more work that overwhelms me that I continue to put off because I'm overwhelmed. The podcast is created and produced by Colin Ketchin and Jeff Levitt and features original music by Colin Ketchin. This episode was edited by me, Timel Chaudhary. We'd love for you to stay engaged with us on social media at Geeking Program or by using hashtag CGP. If you want to know more about us and all of our other projects, head to commongeekingprogram.com.